Next guest, famed actor Chaz Palminteri, who has made some of the most famous movies on the big screen, characterized with important themes of family values, never wasting a human life, and safe streets. Mr. Palminteri, producer and Academy Award nominated actor starring in movies like A Bronx Tale, The Usual Suspects, and Bullets Over Broadway. They're all fabulous flicks, and he is currently starring in the one man show, A Bronx Tale. So, Chaz Palminteri, welcome to Cudlow. It's oh, a great pleasure. Nice Alan, to be here, Larry. Nice to be here. Um, so, those are my views. But, uh, you know, I, mm. I was talking to my pal Mark Simone, who you know well. Yeah. You, your name came up on the set, I don't know, a month ago. Let me just start because let's go to The Bronx Tale, which is one of the most famous movies probably ever made. Um, a lot of that story, it seems to me, is about safe streets, okay? Yeah. And, um, Whatever one thinks of the mob and the mob story, the mob tried to stop crime, as best I can determine. Absolutely, Larry. I mean, there was, um, you know, fear works. Mm -hmm. Fear works. If, you, if a person has... It's like a child. If a child doesn't fear you, the child's going to go off the rails. It's very simple. And it's the same thing with adults. Back when I grew up, they used to have... You remember those A-tracks would go in a car. It's like those big A-tracks. And they were... And where I lived... Um, it was right off Southern Boulevard where there was a bar where all the wise guys would hang out, and I would hang out. And all the uh, first week, all of a sudden, all the cars were broken into. Mm. Everything. Every car had a broken window stealing the A-tracks. So now, I'm not saying this is a good thing to do, but what the wise guys did, <laughs> yes. they got two of the uh, junkies, mm. the leaders, they took them aside, and they said, here's the deal. Mm. If you want to rob... Cause and if you want to, we know you, oh, you need it for your fix. You rob on that side of the street. Mm. You never rob on this side of the street in our neighborhood anymore. And you know what, Larry? Never a car was broken into on that side. On that, on the other side, yes. But I always say fear works. You know, you can't have, you cannot have criminals know that resisting arrest is not a crime anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't do, look, I'm a brief proponent of the NYPD. Everybody knows mm -hmm. that. I've been, I've been championing the NYPD. Uh, Joanne, Patri uh, Joanne Patrice and Black Lives Matter, and, um, excuse me, Blue Lives Matter. Um, and so I, I always say, how could you arrest someone if there's no, if he just says, I don't want to go? You're going to let him out of jail. So You're going to let him out no of jail. No so. jail, no jail. Yeah, it's not right. I mean, you know, People talk about things, Larry. They say, get the illegal guns off the street. You know, and, and I'm really one to say, how could you get the legal guns off the street if you can't... Stop and frisk was a terrible thing to give up. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. Mm -hmm. Giuliani and, um, and Bloomberg, mm -hmm. they were very strong with the stop and frisk. And if you can't touch someone or say, look, does he have a gun on him or not, it's not going to happen. You can't go into a store and say... You could rob anything under $1,000 and it's okay. Because I don't blame them. If I had no money and I needed it, I would do it too. You know, I mean, that's just the way it is. Better to be feared than loved. It's better, better to, be, to feared. be feared. By yes. the way, I think it's true in politics and I think it's true in foreign policy yeah. as well as local crime on the streets. Right. If, if there's no fear of punishment, you're just going to keep robbing. You're just going to keep doing it. Yeah. Listen, I was afraid to cross over the lines because I knew that my dad said, don't let me catch you over there. Mm -hmm. You can't hang with those guys. I'm warning you. And, you know, I was afraid. I, was, I said, okay, Dad, I, I'll try not to do it. In the, it's so interesting. In the Bronx mm -hmm. tale, the mob keeps the peace. Right. The mob liked stability and safety. Now, they had their own battles, their own wars. Yes. We could talk about that another time. We can talk about that now if you feel yeah. like it. But the point I'm making is um, there, I think there was more safety then oh. than there is now, and I think the streets were safer then than they are today. Oh, anybody could tell you that. Growing up in an Italian neighborhood... This uh, is the Bronx. In the Bronx. Yep. Even my friends in, who grew up in East Harlem they will tell you that those neighborhoods, nobody locked the doors, and it really was like that. Everybody would be outside, and when a stranger came in the neighborhood, no matter what color he was, mm. it had nothing to do mm. with race, everybody knew what was going on. It was very, very safe. It was like the, the ultimate in neighborhood watch back then. And you knew if you messed on one of those stores, it would be a problem. One of the things, I think, one of the themes 
um, in the Bronx Tale is how sad it is. You're lecturing young people, the, your, your protege in particular, how sad it is to waste a life. Yes. And that is an important, that thought is yeah. lost today with all this drug stuff running around. I mean, right. that is wasting your life. If you don't get killed, it's still wasting your life because, you know, you're going to be down and out most of the time. And, of course, the threat of getting killed is enormous with some of these advanced drugs. Never waste a life. I consider that family values. I don't hear enough about that, Chaz. I really don't. No, I mean, f I know five cases, five in my area. It's a very affluent area in Westchester. Mm. Five young boys died. Mm. Five. Mm. Bo boys in their 20s of fentanyl. Mm. Okay. Mm. So I say, I, say to the, I say to you, I say, a life is... People don't realize when you have a child, that child is like a universe. It's not just a child. That child is going to have... He's going to get married, going to have kids. Those kids are going to have kids. It's a waste of a life. Look, drugs are 99 and 0. Mm. They never lose. Mm. Now, are there... Like marijuana. There, marijuana could be very good for somebody with a terminal disease, some people in pain. So let's be fair about that, and I understand that. For medicinal reasons, yes, they could use that. But when you overdo it with anything, whether it be alcohol, drugs, anything, what happens is if you just give carte blanche to everybody, say, free this, free that, it makes it feel like, oh, that's normal, that's all right. Mm. So little kids go, oh, I can get high. I can get stoned. Drugs always, always will make you lose. Always, Larry. Always, always. yes, sir. Um, if you were going to remake the movie Bronx Tale... What would Hollywood say about that today? Hollywood, which is different than Hollywood was a long Could it time get ago. made today? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, the good thing about it is it, it does talk about race relations. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's, re it's relevant today as it was when I first did it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still do the one-man show. I do it all over the country. Uh, you know, I did it. it. It was a hit in New York. I went to Vegas. It became the hottest. It became not only the hottest show in Las Vegas, it won show of the year mm. on the Sunset Strip. Mm. I still do it. I'm doing it actually Sunday, June 11th at the, at the Paramount Theater in Huntington, New York. Mm -hmm. uh, June 23rd, then I'll be in, uh, in Dover, uh, in Delaware, and I'm doing it at the Rollins Theater. Every month I do maybe two performances all around the country. I only want to do a couple performances. But I, when people come to see it, they realize, because I tell them what my neighborhood was like. I play all 18 characters. That's what De Niro saw. Mm -hmm. That's how the movie got made. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when I was broke in Hollywood, I, people were getting high, and I could have said, you know what, I'm just going to get high and forget it. But no, I didn't. I showed up. I sat down, and I wrote about my life growing up in the Bronx, produced this one-man show, bam, and it, made me, and it made me a star. So you think Hollywood would let you do the whole movie again? Maybe because of the maybe because there's such a black and white theme in it, they might. Uh -huh. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. That I, I, I'm not. But it's possible they might. How do you figure? Again, one of the themes from the Bronx Tale. So you're talking about the mafia, which is crime families. Right. But these crime families had what we would call traditional family values. Now, right. It's, it's I call it a conundrum. Uh, the paradox. It's a paradox. It's a paradox. Yeah, it Thank is. you. Right? It, it is because but there they, you have it. They go to church with their kids. Yes. On Sunday, then Monday they're ordering a hit to somebody, <laughs> and they think it's not wrong. Right. Now I'm not condoning that, but right. they think it's not wrong because that's the world where they come from. They can compartmentalize very easy. So, I, I you know, I couldn't do that. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, like I get, Sonny was a great guy. Do I, do I condone what he did? No. But he wasn't... He was a very complex individual. He was a killer. He would kill you, not for no reason. Uh -huh. And he would... But he was also very funny, and he was the one who, was, who told me about Machiavelli when I was growing up. <laughs> he said, all wise guys read... He goes, presidents read Machiavelli. And he was right. As I got older, I realized they all read Machiavelli. I don't think this president read Machiavelli. No. I don't think so, no. But that's another segment. Yes. I don't, I don't oh. want to put you on the spot and talk about politics. Okay. It's, it's too important to talk about values. Um, down through the years, uh, 
You meet people, you talk to people, you've done a lot of other things. You did a great The Bullets Over Broadway. It was a Woody Allen movie. Yo. It was a fabulous movie, absolutely yeah. fabulous movie. You should have you should have won the Oscar for a Bronx Tale. Well, you you know, should have won a couple Oscars, in my humble opinion. I got close a couple of times to be nominated, but it, you know, it'll happen. It's I actually okay. liked I like the movie Jade too. A little risque, yeah, well, but thank, I, a little I, risque. I like Jade. No, no, it was yeah. good. And yeah. Caruso was your co-star. Dave Caruso. He's an awfully wonderful. good actor. Wonderful actor, yes. Wonderful actor. So what's next? What are you gonna do next? You, you got well, another movie left in you? Oh, I got plenty of movies left in me. You know, I'm writing another play for Broadway right now. Ah. And I'm very excited about that. I wrote it for a wonderful uh, African-American actor, Giancarlo Esposito. And uh, I'm really looking forward for that. I hope it gets to Broadway. We'll see. You know, I'm, I'm doing a, a TV series called Graves End, which I'm very excited about, ah. with a gentleman named Willem DeMeo, who wrote and directed Fabulous. a lot of the episodes. Yep. Most of the episodes. And so, and I do the one-man show all over. And I'm also a restaurateur. My restaurant's not too far from me. I have Chaz Palmentari's, one of the best Italian restaurants. That's Simone told me that you had a couple of restaurants. Yes, I have one, 30 West 46th Street, and another one in 264 uh, Main Street in White Plains. I never say my restaurant's the best restaurant in Manhattan. Is it one of the top five? Yes. That I will tell you. <laughs> that I will tell you. And I'm very excited about all that. Mr. Chaz Palmentari, we are very grateful that God you bless. would come on set. I appreciate it very much. And thank you for your message.